Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Most Holy Redeemer. It's good to have you all here. Um, I have a few announcements today. Uh, our second collection today is for our music ministry. Uh, as always, thank you for your generous support. The Missionaries of the Precious Blood are hosting an Advent Day reflection with our very own Father Joe Nazel next Saturday, uh, December 9th. Uh, you can find more information in the bulletin. On Wednesday evenings in Advent, our parish will have a prayer service in the style of the Teze community. Prayer will begin at 7 p.m. and conclude approximately at 7.40. All are welcome. Uh, this upcoming Friday, December 8th, is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our Masses will be celebrated at 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Hopefully we'll see you there. Uh, and today's coffee hour is hosted by our MHR Women's Group. Stop by, say hello to our friendly volunteers, and also stop by the crafts fair downstairs. It's, it's really nice. I'm going to hand it on over to Rob. There's a little bit more to tell you. As you can hear, the bells are here, so that's great. And uh, my quick announcement is we need people for the bell choir. We need a complement of 10. We have currently five. We will be debuting on Christmas Eve. We will be playing on Christmas Day, Epiphany, various festival occasions. The rehearsals are Saturdays at 1 p.m. here through the month of December. But yeah, we need five more people. So that's why I'm giving a little announcement here. Be generous in the second collection to the music ministry. They're great. We've been, we practiced for the first time yesterday. It kind of sounds amazing. It's quite angelic, you know, just kind of an addition to this parish. So talk to me or talk to Ty if you want to be part of the bell choir. Thanks. And I heard from Ty, no music reading experience needed. If you can keep a beat, you can join the bell choir. Um, do we have any visitors, any returning parishioners that we can welcome this morning? Well, it's good to have you all here. Let's all stand and greet one another as we begin our celebration. Great. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Let us call to mind our sins as we prepare for, to celebrate these sacred mysteries. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may work they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the communion of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds, we would not hope for, such as they had not heard of of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you do such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us 
and have delivered up us to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you await the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on that day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man traveling abroad. He leaves his home and he places his servants in charge, each with his own work. He orders the gatekeeper to keep watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch the gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Last uh, weekend, three college students visiting family and friends in Burlington, Vermont, over Thanksgiving weekend were on their way to one of the students' grandmother's house for dinner. All three young men were are Palestinian, born in the West Bank, grew up together in the occupied West Bank, came to the United States to go to college. Their family said it would be safer here. They were speaking a mixture of English and Arabic. Two of them were wearing traditional Pakistani headdresses. A 48-year-old man approached them on the sidewalk, and according to the police report, without saying a word, pulled out a gun and started shooting. All three of the college students were wounded. One of them, Hisham Awatani, a student at Brown University, was shot in the spine and may never walk again. In a statement given to Brown University, he said, I am but one casualty in this much wider conflict. According to the United Nations report, 17,144 people have been killed in Gaza including 7,208 children since the bombing began by Israel in retaliation for the massacre of October 7th. You may recall a few weeks ago in a suburb of Chicago, a six-year Palestinian boy was killed 
by his landlord. We are living in a time of cruelty and callousness, of violence toward those who believe differently than we do or have different beliefs. Into this atmosphere of hate, the season of Advent celebrates the coming of the Prince of Peace, the light of the world. We light the Advent wreath, this wheel of hope, to say, come in the darkness of this day, so overwhelmed by violence and fear, come, light of the world, come. This is why the parable we heard in Mark's gospel today carries a sense of urgency. Be alert, be watchful, stay awake, be on the lookout for peace. My friends, we don't have to look very far to see evidence of wide-eyed optimism, to look at the world through rose-colored glasses. The season of Advent offers us authentic hope. When we practice the kind of hope Advent advises, we don't sit back and passively wait for things to get better. Remember, Sister Joan Chittister once said that hope and despair are cut from the same cloth, made from the same material. Hope does not promise that all will be perfect, but it promises there is goodness in each person. Throughout the Advent season, we hear people of hope, John the Baptist, Mary, Joseph, Elizabeth, prophets like we heard this morning from Isaiah, who reveal this authentic hope that is reflected in God's active love. It's not a passive resignation to whatever will be, will be. It is about believing and encouraging one another to press on, reminding that even though the darkness of violence and fear seems overwhelming at times, the light cannot be extinguished. The light cannot be extinguished in you or in me or in any of us. There is a light that dwells within us, that light of Christ. That is the hope that carries us forward and that is the hope that is the catalyst for transformative action in our world. It is the hope grounded in the belief that God desires to make that dwelling place in each of our hearts. You know, one of my favorite Advent quotes is from Thomas Merton, who said, into this world, this demented inn, in which there is absolutely no room for him at all, Christ comes uninvited, but because he cannot come, because he cannot be at home in it, because he's out of place in it, his place is with those who do not belong, who are rejected by power because they're regarded as weak, those who are discredited, those who are denied the status of persons, those who are tortured, those who are excommunicated or exterminated those who are cut off. When we welcome another into our home, we often say, make yourself at home. It's an expression of hospitality. We try to create space for a person to feel comfortable. But as Merton points out, Advent and Christmas, the story of Advent and Christmas suggests that God, when God finally comes to earth to make himself, God's self at home, there is no room. There's no room because it's so filled with hate. Our present world resembles what the prophet Isaiah proclaims in today's first reading. Pleading with God, rend the heavens and come down. Do something. Do something with a people and a planet that's in pain. The prophet wants God to show divine power, shake those mountains, show awesome deeds to reveal God's strength and that God is in charge. Isaiah acknowledges God is angry. We're sinful. 
The prophet's blunt. All our good deeds, he says, are like polluted rags. We become like withered leaves, and our guilt carries away like the wind. Into this mess, we invite God to come. Make yourself at home. But God never really feels at home. For from the moment of conception in the womb of a virgin to a birth in a manger because there was no room in the end, to a lonely hill outside the city of Jerusalem where he will be crucified, Jesus will find a place with those who are outcast, those who cannot find a place, those who are pushed away to the peripheries, those who are marginalized, those who don't fit in those who have no power. Jesus will never make himself at home in the world. Instead, he will be like that annoying guest who turns everything upside down. He will, make, he will take the invitation to make yourself at home, and then he will make everyone uncomfortable by bringing in all of his friends from the fringe to find a place at the table. Into this cozy and comfortable space, the child Jesus will disrupt and take us out of our comfort zones. Jesus will show us not how to make peace or make ourselves at home in the world, a world where wars rage and violence reigns, where children are slaughtered and refugees escaping terror and injustice and oppression in their own countries are turned away at the border of a country that's the wealthiest on earth a place where hate crimes continue to inflict injury and death on the LGBTQ community, especially the transgender community, where incidents of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia are on the rise, and where tensions in this polarized world push people over the edge, like that man carrying a gun and shooting three college students for speaking Arabic and wearing Palestinian headdress. How can we feel at home in this world? And that is why Jesus tells his disciples and us, be watchful, be alert. You don't know when the time will come. The parable also uses the image of home, the traveler going abroad, trusting his staff to keep the home running smoothly while he's away, but he warns them. If these servants think they can get themselves, make themselves comfortable, if they think they can go to sleep while the boss is away, or shirk their responsibilities while the boss is away, that's why he says, wake up, because the boss will come suddenly without warning. Watch, stay awake, be alert. Don't get comfortable in this demented end of a world. You remember that old line, Jesus is coming, look busy? The question is, what are we busy about? What are we busy about? Are we busy making ourselves more comfortable? Or are we busy about living in such a way that God's reign of justice and peace, truth and mercy and love breaks through in this little corner of God's creation, in this corner of the Castro, in this parish of Most Holy Redeemer? My friends, the world is a mess. The volume of violence is high. Advent seeks to switch the station, not to serenades and symphonies to drown out the cacophony of chaos. Rather, it seeks to attune our ears, the ears of our hearts, to listen especially to those with whom we disagree, those who have a different faith than ours, a different expression of faith, those who may be different from ourselves. Because there is so much yelling and screaming these days, Advent also combines that sense of urgency with practical patience, that of the potter and the wheel trying to mold those stubborn pieces of clay into a beautiful vessel. We are that clay. Each and every person on earth is that clay, and God is the potter. My friends, Advent doesn't offer us optimism. It offers us a deep-seated hope in the belief that no matter how bad things get, no matter how dark it may seem in the world, good people will prevail. 
So good people, good people, good people. As we approach the table today, may we pray for the courage to hope and to act on that authentic hope that we carry close to our hearts. May we be a light of peace and hope to someone who dwells in darkness. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to the heaven and is seated at the right hand. And his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Lord of all creation, you fill the universe with signs and wonders of your presence. Throughout this season of Advent, help us to be vigilant, watchful, in finding our way in that path of redemption. Help us to create a space for the coming of your light. During Advent, we will, after each prayer, just have silence to create that intention, to make room for that intention in our hearts. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Pope Francis, for Archbishop Cordelion, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, 
the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may be find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. Rufina Gonzaga, Gonzaga, Robert Laxamana, Joanna Kennedy, Estelita Pira, Henry Kissinger. Pray for those who have died. Good and gracious God, from the silent stirrings of our hearts, we join our prayers in solidarity with all your children throughout the world, especially those who are held captive, those who are in places of violence, famine, or fear. We seek in this silent prayer a holy communion with all peoples of the earth through Christ our Lord.
My sisters and brothers pray, please, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to our loving and gracious God. May God accept this sacrifice from your holy and priestly hands as well as we pray. Accept, O oh God, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. May what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. We offer this Mass especially for Most Holy Redeemer Parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago. He opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, all that is last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. and all you created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, loving God, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we bring to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we have become your beloved daughters and sons. For on that night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O God, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith, hope, and love your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, the religious, the entire people your son has gained for your own. And listen graciously to the family here to the prayers of this family you've summoned before you this morning. In your compassion, O merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. daughters and sons of God with that spirit of God's love dwelling within our hearts daughters and sons now able and daring to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Deliver 
us, O God, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, fear, or distress as we wait in blessed hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, when you appeared to your disciples, they were huddled in fear in that upper room. You showed them your wounds, you breathed in them, and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. My peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Look not at our sins or our fears or our failures, but look at our faith. It is the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Before we come to the table, then, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sin and the sin of all the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Please remain seated for the prayer. May these mysteries, O oh God, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Friday, of course, was World AIDS Day, Remembrance Day, and the beautiful uh, quilt piece was part of the uh, Post Holy Redeemer's contributions uh, to the remembrance here in San Francisco on December 1st. And invite us to just pause a moment and remember our loved ones who have died of AIDS or those who are living with AIDS, HIV, and uh, my own community was transformed profoundly by two of our priests who uh, died of AIDS. It transformed us into a community that was more inclusive, I would hope. So let us pray. God of promise, we are ever mindful of the family and friends lost to AIDS and the persistent challenges of living with HIV. We ask your healing presence for the millions of people living with the disease today. Make of us a safe haven for those abandoned, discriminated against, and rejected due to their illness. Ignite in us the courage to advocate for just distribution of health care and medical aid in this country and to share our resources generously with those bearing the burden of this epidemic abroad. Guide us alongside people worldwide toward the achievement of getting to zero goal, zero new HIV infections, zero discrimination, and zero AIDS-related death. May your Holy Spirit inspire and fortify the scientists diligently working toward finding a cure. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for coming today and sharing in this table at the beginning of this Advent season. Please come downstairs and continue the fellowship and also the view all the crafts that will support of St. James School. This Mass is ended, so let us go in peace to be a light for our world. Thanks be to God.